And we have, we have a very interesting situation here. This will be the first of three matchups that we see between Zane Bergen and Connor McCormick. They attend school probably less than 10 miles between Niwot and Longmont. They're both exceptional distance runners. And at 3,200, they've got a couple other guys they've got to worry about too. So it's not just looking over your shoulder and seeing, oh, Zane Bergen's there or, oh, Connor McCormick's there. But we've got to contend with Eric LaRue and Jackson Shorten as well. And there are a couple other guys who could mix it up in here as well. Lan Lambert of Durango, Tyler Knorr to Cheyenne Mountain. This is a loaded 3,200 field. This may be the, um, this may be the, in fact, I'm pretty sure it is the most competitive 3,200 field we have ever seen in a state meet, at least boys 3,200. It's competitive enough that you can't really afford to let anyone hang around. If you've got something in the tank, you're probably going to want to push that pace and run the race out of some, some other folks. You don't want them coming back late on the last lap when you don't really know how you're going to feel. So I expect we'll see a pretty quick pace. And these guys know each other. Um, they know each other's capabilities. There may be some reluctance to, to move into the lead. But the pace should be pretty quick, pretty steady around. We'll see. We'll see if we end up with a record here. Getting set here, and we're off for the boys' 3,200 meter in the 4A. And you mentioned they're going to have to deal with, even as tough as this is between the competition between Bergen and McCormick from Niwot and Longmont, respectively, LaRue and Shorten and Lambert ha might have something to say about it. And Eric LaRue currently owns the fastest time in the state this year. He was clocked at 9.10.46, so just a few seconds about four seconds off of the state meet record set 14 years ago. Okay, and there we go. It's Jackson Shorten on the inside, Zane Bergen on his outside shoulder. We'll check the pace at, at a lap and see where we're going. But, again, this is – look for this to be very competitive. Shorten and Bergen, one and two. LaRue's in three. And I believe that's Lan Lambert in four, but also LaRue's teammate right there. Both of LaRue's teammates right there. Connor McCormick sitting back a little. And they come through at 106. That is a blazing first lap for a 3200. <laughs> if you go ahead and multiply out the math, that's an 848 pace. And these guys can hold this pace for a long time. These are some very talented distance runners. We'll check really closely that lap split on the second lap. We'll see how close to that 106 is time they are on the second lap as well. And if they're holding tight there, this is going to be a show before it's over. Colorado has been blessed to have such tremendous distance as, as well as sprint runners that, that not only compete for a record virtually every year, then they end up getting recruited and go around the country, and they right. compete at their respective co schools and conferences. And invariably, we've seen multiple Colorado runners in in U.S. Uh, World U.S. Championship, World Championships, and even the Olympics moving forward. Okay, they have backed off the pace just a little bit here. This second lap is going to be four or five seconds slower than the first lap, and that'll. Be Sooner or later, someone's going to lose some patience with that and say, hey, we're letting people hang around that we shouldn't be let hang around. So we'll see what happens here. Somebody's going to need to break off the front or Shorten's going to have to turn up the pace a little to here you see if you, as you watch around the turn. We've got 12 guys still in the hunt. So we'll see what happens here on lap three. So the first lap was about 106. The second lap was about 110. So four-second drop-off. And 110 is a pace that's not going to get it done with this crew unless they all sort of mutually agree, hey, we'll go 110s until lap seven or, or whatever. But that's an awful lot of trust for an awful lot of people. How much in advance? Obviously, you're, you're, you're preparing yourself mentally. You know what the field looks like. How much does your strategy change once the race has already started? 
Well, that depends a lot on does somebody do something strange off the front that you weren't expect. As long as things play out according to your expectations, you, you can stick with your strategy forever. But it's the moment that things break from your expectations that decisions have to be made. And that's where you start separating the experienced runners and, and also the ones who have upset on their mind and they just feel really good that day, how to manage that momentum and also adrenaline to, to push forward, especially with a state title on the line. We'll make a note here that third lap was right about 110. So second and third laps were spot on together. So right now, that league group seems to be content to settle at 110. These guys are capable of faster than 110. They, these guys are, they could go 107, 108. So we're beginning to drop some people off the league group. Still a lot of people hanging around. We're going to come through the mile here. We'll check the time at the mile closely, but we're not going to be on record pace at the mile. So right now, clearly 11 guys still in the race for, for first place and yet several others in the race for other places. But at least 11 guys close enough to the front that if, if, if we keep this pace around here, then we're going to leave 11 guys in the hunt. The last lap, once again, right there at 110. If you run 110s all day long, you end up at a 920 pace. This field is capable of faster than a 920. And then you have the strategy for the last two, I would imagine, the last two laps, too, of depending, again, how stretched out the field is, whether or not you make your move then and how tight it is accordingly. Well, Unless you're at the back of the lead pack, you really don't know how stretched out the field is. That, mm -hmm. And that's one of the things. Sure. Zane Bergen has taken over the lead, and he can feel the guys right around him, but he doesn't know that, hey, this lead pack is still 10 people. That's Actually, it's still 11 people. So Bergen with the lead. We'll see what the lap split comes through here on. And once again, a 110 on that lap. So, but I think, I, I think those guys have ticked it up a notch here. Lap number six, Bergen, yeah, it looks like LaRue right in his hip pocket. And that's either Nord or Exton right behind him. Shorten is falling off the lead just a little bit. McCormick is staying in the same place he's been. He's going to have to get out of a box if he wants to make a move, but there's, there's time to get out of a box. Right now is a good opportunity to get out of a box. Bergen in the lead, LaRue in second. And that is Tyler Nord, I believe, in third. So we're down to just over two laps to go. Somebody's got to make a break here. Zane Bergen has very good speed, and maybe he has confidence enough in his closing speed that he figures he can cover any move the field makes. But we still, we still have runners in the hunt. There are 11 guys in that lead pack with two laps to go. Bergen's last lap was 111. Again, that's, that's, <laughs> that's not what this field is capable of. And he came in at 659.91, and right on his hip was Eric LaRue at 7 even. Yep. Nord, 7 minutes, point and you one see two. Connor McCormick's moving up yep. on the back straight. Connor McCormick's one of those guys you don't want to leave in the race if you don't have to. He has excellent speed. So right now, it's Bergen, it's LaRue, it's McCormick, and it's Nord, and... Those four guys are all very much in the hunt. All nine of the, the ones you mentioned, all the top nine, all have a, between a 659.91 all the way to a 7 minute 95. Okay, here we go. Four laps, or one lap, four guys. 805.57 for Bergen. 805.65 LaRue McCormick. 805.84. There goes LaRue. There goes McCormick. To go, and it is be a 
Bergen is your defending champ in this race. No one's getting any separation yet. There goes McCormick into the lead. He's going to be very tough to catch. McCormick has excellent closing speed, and look, he's opening the gap. And there's going to be a lot of questioning of strategy here. These guys let McCormick hang around at a leisurely pace, and McCormick has speed to burn at the end. Here we go. McCormick first. It's going to be LaRue and Nord. It's going to be Bergen fourth. McCormick. Nord. LaRue. Bergen. And I believe that's Land Lambert's going to finish fifth. That'll be Exton in sixth. 9.03.83 for Connor McCormick. That last lap, Connor McCormick hit it in 58 seconds. That's what happens when you let a guy with speed hang around with extra starch in his legs. McCormick <laughs> just nailed that last lap. That is an insane pace for the final 400 meters from Longmont's senior Connor McCormick and if that time holds the 903.83 we've got a new state that, meet that record. That is a state meet Holy record. Holy yes. smokes and that was established in 2008 by Kevin Williams and we also have two others who would have beaten it and right behind you mentioned Tyler Nord, Cheyenne Mountain 905.42 his teammate Eric LaRue who had the top seed time coming in 905.65 three beating the state meet record.